All right, uh, our theme for this year, no, let me start somewhere. Our quinquennial theme for five years started in the year 2020, and the theme is running through 2025. And I know you remember it very well. What is the theme, our quinquennial theme? Hello? Our theme for five years. What is, how does it read? Yes, reach the world, I will go. Reach the world, I will go. We shall still be singing that one until the year 2025. Every year, from the year 2020 until 2025, we shall be asking ourselves, I will go to do what? Last year, we answered that question by saying, I'll go and proclaim the three angels' messages. So this year, we're asking ourselves, I will go to do what? Then it give us, gives us the, the theme for the year 2023, which says, Jesus is coming soon. And I, I know even the union president was here, and I told you last Sabbath, if you forget, then you must be quick people. So quick in forgetting. Eh? Jesus is coming soon. Get involved. Jesus is coming soon. Get involved. Then there is a slogan for the next three years. Uh, the year 2023 through 25. We're talking about mission impact. And I know that one, he could not forget to tell you about that one. Mission Impact 2025. Double our membership. Mission Impact 2025. Double our membership. Yes. Uh, in my presentation, I'll, I'll be coming back uh, uh, to those slogans and uh, uh, commitments and uh, words. Uh, which are going to challenge us and uh, cheer us up so that we keep on uh, uh, working for the Lord. So one thing which you must have in mind, the Quinquino theme still remains, and I think it is here, I will go. It, it, it should be our, our, our larger theme uh, uh, for five years. We are remaining three years more. But in each year, we must have a sub-theme. So for this year, the sub-theme is Jesus is coming soon. Uh, get what? Involved. And that's why the, the division ECD is so, so challenging us because of that, strong, that, that those words, get involved. Then it has also added another slogan, another slogan which says, from spectators to disciple makers. From spectators to do, disciple makers. In other words, yes, some of us are here, Adventists, uh, members, worshippers every other time, but in most cases, we are required to see that we come peace free, we listen peace free, and without causing any problem with anybody, any challenge, any, pro any trouble anywhere, we walk out just peace free that way. Then we are spectators. We are just watching things happen. We are supposed to be part of those things, making those things happen. And therefore, we must challenge ourselves that we must transform ourselves from uh, spectators to disable what? Disable makers. In other words, every person who has been called and accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior, that person for sure is a disciple of Jesus. And disciples of Jesus were called not to come and sit idle and watch. They were called to come and serve and bring other disciples also. So from spectators to disable makers. And I know he also told you that um, uh, our target, uh, which we are focusing on, is about uh, doubling our membership uh, so that uh, for the next three years, if your membership is 3,000, by the grace of God, in the year 2025, let that membership grow to 6,000. And it is possible because these are things which the Lord is, is leading. And as I said, therefore, each member is, always, uh, is requested to participate, uh, to be active. And I know this told you about the great controversy uh, book that in the next two years, 23, 2023, 2024, 
the Advent Church worldwide has given a target to, to distribute uh, over 2 million copies to non Adventists, and each person at least to distribute uh, two books this year at least. The price that had come earlier was 450, but there's a subsidy, and therefore the book is now costing 200 shillings. That means you can buy as many copies as possible. But let's go uh, uh, into our sermon. Uh, let's go into our sermon. So, as I said, I am happy and I thank God that He has given me the earliest opportunity uh, to be able to share this Sabbath with you and also worship with you and the praise and thank God and start the year with the blessings so that we can move together. As you saw in the program, uh, our theme for today, I know you have it, it says what? I know you are given the programs. Oh, you. You, as you are entering here, you must have received one. Our theme for today. All right. The theme for today, if you don't have it, I can remind you. It says, this one thing is most urgent. This one thing is most urgent. And I hope those ones in the communication department, I, I am not tight here. I can come closer. Uh, there is that preaching of the gap. I see some of you at a distance. If I cannot break any rules here, I can still move closer uh, if, I am, if, if I am not making, breaking any, any rule. So if I break a rule, you warn me in advance. All right, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are in your presence. Thank you because of the opportunity you have given us to share your word. We invite you to speak to us now. Send your old angels that they can be in our midst. Pour your Holy Spirit so they can be able to teach us and touch us. And Lord, I pray that may heaven be able to make this place a real sanctuary of worship. And may the angels, Lord, minister to us as your ministering spirits and agents. And may your glory cover us. And may heaven come down and speak to us. May what we say here not be ours, but you speak. Because we don't have words that can actually God be able to convert us and even to make us walk according to a pattern. It is only you. We surrender into your hands now from the beginning of this session to the very end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, I said this one thing is most what? Urgent. And you saw the text is Revelation, a chapter 22, verse, and somebody will be assisting me in reading. I know somebody will be assisting in reading. Just remind us about that verse. Just read that verse. Okay, thank you. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. The Bible says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. That is the key text for today. Now, let me start with this common uh, information that we have. In the book of John chapter 3, verse 16, that one is a common one which all of us know. In the book of John chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible records the following words. And the marine, if you are ready, you just read. Don't keep on repeating, just read. Okay. We continue John chapter 3 verse 16 says what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Alright, many times we talk about everlasting life or eternal life. But the key word here, for God so loved the world so much. In other words, when God created human beings and other creatures, his love was great for what he had created. And therefore, he said the only thing after the entire universe, the entire world are plunged into sin, what can I do so that I can be able to redeem and restore? The only thing is to love and demonstrate my love. And he says that whoever would believe that kind of act should not perish. The word should, I know it is. It is, it is a must 
is something that it should be done. Not, there is no compromise about it. It is not that I can. It should. It should not perish, but have everlasting. But if you look at verse uh, 15, the ending word says, uh, should not perish, but have eternal life. Then verse 15 says, everlasting. You know, when you use the word eternal life, it is speaking about, it is derived from eternity. In other words, that kind of life was there from the beginning, which we cannot be able to, uh, to imagine or we cannot be able to, uh, to discern, we cannot understand. It shall be there after, from eternity to eternity. But everlasting means from the time you accept that life, that life is not going to be with you for a short time. It will be there as long as things shall last. In other words, it's a continuous one. So God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have that everlasting life. For God so loved the world. That is First John chapter 3, verse 16. Do you know that is, that is a relationship between, first, between John chapter 3, verse 16 and First John chapter 3, 16? Alright, what have I said? I have said... Do you know that there is a relationship between John chapter 3 verse 16 and the first John chapter 3 verse 16? We are now in first John chapter 3 verse 16. What does it say? By this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Yes. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world. And now when he comes again, the same John comes again in the letters. He said, by this we know about love. That there is something, if we mention and we remind people about it, and we have it in our minds, this thing is the one which will make us, and for sure, if we know it, then we shall say we know love. Then he says, this is how we know love. That this person called Jesus and this Savior called Jesus, he laid down his life for us. So he might have said many things about love, but once he laid down his life for us, then that was love and the great love. That's how we know love. And he says, for the same reason, then he has done something that we also should lay down our lives for the sake of our brothers, our brethren, and other people. Now the question comes, if laying down of Jesus' life now guarantees my salvation, how am I going also? Am I going to be the same like Jesus? Then it means that which is so dear to you, that which is so gracious to you, that which is so beneficial, that, that which matters a lot in your life, when you sacrifice, you forgo, forgo it, and you surrender and say, for the sake of so and so, this one I'll forgo. You are doing what we call laying down. In other words, you are loving others so much that you can sacrifice whatever it takes so that these people can also have a meaning of life in their lives. And that is what Jesus is, John is saying here. That if Jesus was able to lay down his life, then this is love. And we know it. Then it is us now to lay down our lives so that others can also have a reason to enjoy and have a hope like the one that we have. But the same Jesus uh, explained further what does it mean. In the book of John chapter 15, I'm still around here, in the book of John chapter 15, when you look at verse 12, 13, 14, 15, Jesus says some things. What kind, he describes this kind of, a, kind of a love, this kind of sacrifice, this kind of act in John chapter 12, uh, uh, chapter 15, verse 12, 13, 14, 15. He says something. This is my commandment that, uh, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Just hold on. This is my commandment. And you know a commandment comes from the Lord. It is as good as that which is written. I command you that you love one another the way I have loved you. How has Jesus loved us? He has loved us as he has said in John chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 16. How has he loved us? 
He has loved us in the way it is mentioned in First John 3, verse 16, that I have laid down my life just because of you. So he says, if you people want also to demonstrate that you love one another, then you must do exactly what I have done. But first, I didn't say something. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Just you... listen. Just I say that one, we shall read first by first. Uh, uh, let's get this way. He says, there are people who have ever promised many things, and they have ever told you many things, that they really, they, they really mean it, and they dearly love you. They have said. They have said. And uh, it is possible, even here in the midst, there's one person who has just leaves a text and says, I am assuring you that I, I love you even as you worship. I miss you. And they, they, have, they, they have smiled. Uh, they have given a smile just a few minutes ago. Or they are in the process of smiling as even as I talk. <laughs> you have, they have been told something. And I know young people many things you are telling each other many things but don't forget those things you are being told they are not new and these people whom you call mamas and babas uh, they were told even greater things than you are sometimes and uh, those things made them to be what they are they gave in they said I cannot resist these words they are strong I cannot resist so he says alright but the bible says and Jesus says it doesn't matter how many promises you can make in this world. It doesn't matter how many words you can say. What kind of language and description that you can say. What matters most is when you have reached the point of sacrificing yourself even to the extent of surrendering everything and even ready to die, then that is what is rated as the greatest kind of love that can ever be found on earth. Great love none other than this laying down his life but john had something in verse 14 there's something he's adding there my brother you are my friends if you do whatever i command you a very important statement you are my friends if you do whatever i command you yes you are the friends of jesus by promises but then today it must be a day when you must be a true, a real friend of Jesus. Jesus wants to renew his friendship with you. Very important. Jesus wants to renew his friendship with you. You are my friends if you obey whatever I tell you. I, I know you have some friends. But you know, when it comes to the issue of uh, spirituality and the journey to the kingdom of God, everybody is your brother and is your sister and is your friend. And I want to introduce you to a friend. A friend before a great friend. A friend before a great friend. I want to introduce you to the person who is seated next to you. If you, you, have, you, don't have, a, you, have, you have not been a, greeted by a friend today, just greet that person who is next to you and tell him or her, hello friend. That is your friend. There are people who sit and they are neighbors and they go to sit and brothers. Ay, ay, ay. Let, can you check out the face of that friend? Don't just, don't greet us in passing as you are rushing. That's our friend, that's your friend. And I want to say you, make that friend for the remaining minutes before the end of this sermon. Let that be your friend. Be seated comfortable and feel you are sitting next to a friend. So Jesus says, if that friend that you have, he can promise you many things, he can tell you things. But let me tell you, they say this, the only friends without the mothers is when you do what is the wish or the will of a friend. Yes, Jesus says this way, you are my friends if I, you do whatever I tell you. Praise God. Now listen, listen, if there is anything ever that Jesus has ever told you and you have never done, you are yet to become a friend of Jesus. You are still on the journey, you have not reached there. You are yet to be a friend of Jesus. Just have a flashback, I know each person has one, 
have a flashback. Whatever Jesus has ever told you, and you have not, up to now you have not done it, then he says, the friendship is not yet cemented, it's not yet sealed. There is a gap between me and you, because I have told you whatever. Right? If Jesus tells you, come to worship every day, every Sabbath at 8 in the morning, and you come always at 11, you have not obeyed what Jesus is telling you. If Jesus has ever told you, through the voice that he has appointed, go to a place and do mission work, either personally, physically, or by sponsoring somebody and you have never done it, See, the friendship is not yet complete. If Jesus has ever told you, please, give me the offering I needed for this work. And yet you say, you know, you have excuses. The friendship is not yet complete. If he tells you, please, use whatever you have, but then percent of his mind is my right. And you only can go and say, if I give God this much, that's a lot. Yes, people know it's a lot. But Jesus, God, Jesus says, Yes, the friendship is not complete. Whatever the Lord has told you, you know it. That which you know, Jesus has told you, God has told you, and you have not done it. Up to now, the friendship has not yet started. And this is a year of starting and making real and true friendship with Jesus. Praise God for that. Ah, so whatever I tell you, that was verse, I think verse 14. Yes, verse 15 says something. I want to end there so that I can go something else. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made, you, I have made known to you. Just consider the number of years you have worked with Jesus. Since you became an Adventist and believer in Jesus Christ, and you have served him. Those years are enough for Jesus to make a statement about you. Remember this. Jesus said these words to his disciples, to his apostles. He walked with them for almost three years now when he made this statement. And he said, you know what? I call you from your business the business that you were depending on as an income for you and your families, your livelihood was on that. But I called you, you left. I told you I'm going to give you another provision. You joined me as workers. Yes, as workers. As laborers in my vineyard, in my ministry. But we have worked together. We have become good friends. I can see it. You are part and parcel of me. The ministry that I have and the vision and the passion has become yours. And therefore, I have really uh, admired and accepted you people. And I know you are serious. You they have not come here to try. You have not come here to try. You are serious in it. He says, now, let me tell you folks, you are no longer, I am no longer calling you servants. This kingdom is yours. Uh, this mission is yours. Uh, this uh, provision is yours. This work is yours. Uh, my father has now become your father. And that's why whatever the father has told me, I have deliberately told you everything because you are now my friends. It is time to be the friends who? Of Jesus. Now that friend of Jesus, yes, they walked with the same Jesus. And Jesus told them many things. And some of the things that he told them, you know, they were not complete. He died on the cross. He went down the grave. He resurrected. He even made them briefly. They shared a few things. And again, he went to heaven. And he said, yes, my friends, I must remember them on earth. And they said, let me give them the message of hope that is found in the book of Revelation. And when he had given this message, he came to the last closing chapter of that, that book of Revelation. 
the very closing chapter. And no wonder the authors of the Bible who are arranging uh, the Bible, the, uh, they combine the, these words, they put them at the very last. Then it took us to the book of Revelation chapter 22, uh, uh, verse 12. And that's where we are. And he makes this statement to his friends. Behold, Behold I am coming quickly. Coming quickly. And my reward is with me. Yes. To give to everyone according to his work. You know, this word, behold, is very different when one says, can you turn and look? Maybe, can you look there? Behold. In other words, remember, be aware, be reminded of the fact, behold, I am coming quickly. He does not say, behold, I will come quickly. No. He is not taking that one to the future. He says, behold, I am coming quickly. In other words, this is an, a continuous. Yes, I am going. It is not an interruption of the mission. The mission is connected. I came from the time I came. I have been here. I have undergone all that you know. And I am going. And I am going for your sake. And I am still coming. It is one connected. Behold, I am coming quickly. As I am going, also I am still on the journey of coming back. Behold, I am coming quickly. And it says when I come, I am not coming like a visitor visiting. You know in the Bible, whenever God came to people, they said God has come to visit. And when God has come to visit, he may come with the pronouncement that you have done against his will, that is punishment for you. Or he comes with good news, blessings for you. And the people feared whenever they could hear that God has come. He has sent a prophet. He has sent a man of God. They were prepared for anything. It was a, tension, a moment of tension. They are waiting for it. Behold, he says, I am coming quickly. So the apostles, the disciples, knew that Jesus said, Whatever he has said about the signs of the second coming, those he said, these things must be fulfilled in this generation. So they knew Jesus is going in this generation, is preparing mansions in this generation, and is coming in this generation. Praise God. He's coming. So he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. And when I come, I am not visiting like a brother visiting a brother. Like children feasting their parents, like parents feasting their children, like a friend feasting a friend. No. Those friends, those people, those family members, they come. When they come and they will miss each other, we feel excited. You hug them. Some come. When they see you from far, they place their bags on the floor. They start running. They come nearer you. They jump to you. They hug you. If they are heavy enough and you are lighter, all of you fall down flat. They hang on your necks. Those are the greetings for people who have missed each other. Then you, you go storytelling. You go talking. Ah, remembering the past. Explaining. You want to explain everything that happened to when, why he or she was away. And finally you eat, you sleep. One, two, three days. Now, you, he has become a common person again. You don't have many more stories to tell. And uh, you know, the person also says, I think I have said enough, I have to go. And that person packs and goes back to his place or her place. A, a friend coming and visiting. But it's here, Jesus says, I am not coming like that one. I am coming to give a reward. I know you have been working. You have been doing some work and some job for me and on my behalf. I am coming. And the way you have worked is the way I am going to reward you. So he says, when I come, it is the time for rewarding. And the time for considering how people I have worked. Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to each person. No wonder, no wonder... In this book of Revelation, chapter 22, Jesus speaks about coming quickly three times. You will find it in verse 7, the same chapter. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is the one who keeps the prophets of this book. 
he says, Behold, I'm coming quickly. You also find it in the chapter in, in verse 20, verse 20, the same, the same, same chapter. He said, Surely I am coming quickly. So in verse 7, he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he. It comes to verse 12, he says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to each person according to this work. And when he goes to verse 22, he says, Surely, an assurance, I am coming quickly. Just let's look at those words. You know, this was a beautiful conversation. You know, John was one of the most blessed servants of God. He had a personal experience with Jesus Christ through the ministry of the angel. But at times when he says, I was shown, he was taken to heaven. And he could also converse with Jesus. Because those words, behold, I am coming, was spoken by Jesus himself. I am coming, in verse 7. I am coming quickly, in verse 12. I am coming quickly, in verse 20. I am coming. And he says, surely, I am coming. A conversation. The angel is, is, feeling, is speaking to John. Jesus is speaking. And John was given an opportunity even to speak. The closing word says, even so, Lord, come quickly. John is also, he has also been given a, a chance and an opportunity also to discuss. What a conversation between Jesus, between John and the, the angel. What a great conversation. Behold, I am coming quickly. The emphasis here, the reward is based on how we have delivered and worked in the Lord's vineyard. You know, our uh, key text or scripture for the theme, the theme is Jesus is coming soon. Get involved. Our key verse is coming from Matthew chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. And that's what I want us to read. It says, Matthew chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. Sorry. It says, Sorry, Matthew chapter 20. Yes. Okay, okay it says, It says, And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle, and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, you will receive. That's Matthew chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. Now, and that is our key text for the year 2023. Jesus is coming soon. Get what? Kanisa, church, Jesus is coming soon. Our key text is Matthew chapter 20 verses 6 and 7. That should be a song that you must have. You know, I have, read the, I have listened to many children's stories. But today I was excited and impressed and I felt happy. I said I've had many children's stories, but this one is another one. One of the best of its kind I've ever listened to. You know, it's good always to appreciate what the Lord has done. It has taken me back those days when we went to youth ministry. We used to go to rallies. We had a program which called Memory Fasts in the afternoon before songs, mixing songs. And you know what could happen? Someone could come and say, I have a memory verse from the book of maybe John chapter 6, which has got almost 56 verses. And they will say, I want to start from verse 1. And they will memorize the verses where there is a comma, he says a comma. Where there is a full stop, he says a full stop. Where there is an exclamation mark, he says exclamation exclam 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 mark. And they say, where there is a conclusion, he says period, and it ends there. And you know, people will watch with their eyes and their mouths open. Watching double, eyes and mouth, all of them watching. And you know what? People were reading their Bibles. But I was challenged one time. One says, I want to give memory verse in half of the book of Revelation. Half of it. 22 chapters. So he says he wanted to do 11 chapters. And the people thought it was a joke. And the man stood forward and they started memorizing word by word. And it went. I know those people wanted to, see, to sing you were bored. Because now, you know, memorizing those ones, you know, that is taking almost five, six choirs could have sung. And they went. 
And the people said, they cheered and they said, after he had put a full stop in the last verse of chapter, of chapter 11, they said, go on, go on. And you know what? He said, you want me to go on? Yes. Let's move on to chapter 12. And they started the people opened their Bibles. Word by word, line by line. And they went up to Revelation 22. And I think only two choirs sang that day and we closed the meeting and they went home. And they said, what someone else will need apart from this? In other words, and that young, that person, I call him young man those days, is uh, alive. He's here in Nairobi. He's one of the most hardworking people around uh, these Eastlands. He's there. And he want to ask his name is Bogonko. You can get him somewhere. I don't know. Uh, Rua is somewhere. He's there. Serving God. So this one, we thank God for this one. Now, the year is the year of activity. Our memory verses are there for six and seven. And our key text about the mission impact is talking about working, working in the fine yard. I want you to forget uh, for, for a few minutes uh, about the spiritual issues. Let us address as it is. Uh, my brother, in that same chapter, just read verse 1 and 2, there's something I want to introduce here. T? Yes. Matthew chapter 20 verse 1 says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Uh, verse 1 and 2. Now, when he had had, when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Yes, you know, when the children came here and said, for the kingdom of heaven is like, I said, wow, my sermon is gone. <laughs> All I said, they are, going, they are going to preach, I come for a summary. All right. The Bible says, for the kingdom of heaven is like an into a land owner or a house, the owner of the house. Very early in the morning, he went out to look for laborers to work in his, uh, his, his land, in his shamba, whatever it is. And then he says, they had a discussion. They agreed from this morning until the closing hour how much the agreement was, the Bible says, a denarius or a penny. And they said, just go. Let me ask you, in your own imagination, when you hear the Bible says, this man went, went looking for people to work in his fine yard, very early in the morning. What do you think, what time could, that, could it have been? Around what time? Just shout, what time do you think? Around 6, 6, 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, most likely it could be 6 a.m. in the morning. Most likely. Or even if it's 7, so it's early, but 6. It's, it, let's say it's, six, it's, it's acceptable. So he found, he woke up at 6, very early in the morning. Before the day goes, he's looking for people to work in his fine yard. And now he finds a team. He says, you go and work. They go. But if you read verse 3, the verse 3 says, when he goes, he finds other people who are standing idle in the market. And he says, you, he doesn't have much conversation with them. He tells he them, just go also you into my vineyard and the work. And he says, he does not even negotiate what's the price or what's the payment. He says, whatever is right, I'll give you. And when you go, that's verse 3 and verse 4. When you go to verse 5, he says he went out again on the sixth hour and the ninth hour and he did likewise. Likewise here means what? The way he has done to the second team. The second team. There was no discussion of how much. He also tells them, you are standing idle. Go also to the final. Go also to the land. Go also to the, go also to the farm and the work. And they, and they told them, whatever is right, I will give you. But look at the, those words which you have read in verse 6 and 7. The Bible says, at about the eleventh what? Ah, judge, at about what hour? 
The eleventh hour. You are too many. But you cannot even produce a voice that can be heard somewhere. At about what hour? The, what hour was it? The eleventh hour. He went out and he said he still found others. They were sitting, standing idle in the market. For them he had a question and he had a question. And the question was, men, why are you standing here the whole day idle, not working? And these people defended themselves. They had to say an excuse. What was the excuse? Hey, what was the excuse, church members? No one has hired us. Know that we don't want to work. Know that we are lazy. But know about us as hired us. I have gone through these areas going to Gajiado or these ones. I have, sometimes I ask my, my, I question myself. Uh, it, it is six in the morning. And I find very many men just seated under a tree discussing, eh, having stories. And uh, they, are, they are not even uh, having taken breakfast. I was asking myself, these are, uh, they keep animals. It, it, oh, they don't even have animals to take care of. Just as six, they are just under trees on the road. They are there discussing. But that one has reminded me, going back to the village, I could see many walking out there in the morning. They are going to breakfast, take breakfast. And the breakfast in, the, in other people's homes. And many times, sometimes they're taking, it is, the breakfast is, is the, the traditional brew, alcohol. And then others in the marketplace, they are bringing a chew and a draft. They are saying very excited that they have given you Jogo. And very excited. They are working and they are waiting for lunch to go home. And also demand for lunch. I have seen them down in the village. But they are told, why don't you work? You go also and work. I can imagine these men who have come at 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock and they have been told if they were serious, especially those ones of 5 o'clock, or not 5 o'clock, actually 5 o'clock, yes, if they were serious, they could see them working hard even without wasting any minute. No story, nothing. They are just working hard if they can ever make a difference so that at least the owner can sympathize and say, you came late, but at least you have done some job. Let me see how many who come from, from, from Nyamira or Kisi here. Let me see. Just raise up your hands. Some people don't know where they come from, don't believe themselves. Just raise your hands. Just raise your hands if you're here. And I know, I don't know whether it's happen, it happened in, in, in some other areas where you come from. Let me ask you this question. There is a, 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 there is a phrase which people used to use when they wanted people to work and help them some work, which they used to call Risaga. Uh, did you hear of Risaga? Or oh, you were born the other day, those things are, oh, you, are you, you are in town and you don't, you understand about, have you ever heard about Risaga? And uh, it might be also existing in your language, in, in, your, in your, other, your other communities, but the, the words Risaga. Uh, who can say, what does Risaga mean? It is something that, what does it mean? You say you have heard it, but you cannot, what does it mean? Shout. Communal work. What type of communal work? Even the chiefs and the, and the elder, el, el, village elders could be called people for communal work. What kind of communal work? Maybe, maybe if you have, a, you are building and you want people to come and help you uh, put uh, to, to put a lot of soil, maybe you are you are you have you are building a new home, so you call those people. They are called Josaga, and their payment is only the food they will eat. Maybe Uji and Aha, ha, 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 ha. there you get it. I don't know whether you come from there or some, but thought you is also in your place. It is also in Luo Josaga. Yes, and that Luo in, in Luo they call it what? Saga Josaga. And you hear that? That's one. Now listen, this is Saga. You know, others were telling me, Mary, go around. And I told him, no. This is only when people work for food. Only that days for food. You come. Somebody says, I am not able to pay or to hire or through what. But I have some work. I need help. Then the condition was only one. Make sure that you can cook good. Ugari, Wimby is there. 
some uh, good vegetables like saga, saga, they are there. Make sure milk, uh, that one of originally from the cow that is for milk, it is there. When people come and make sure that you can also make some porridge of wimby, the best one, so that you can be around, give them around nine, ten, and at one. And you know what other men could do? Men could always say they could send their wives those blessings and their children to one work. When, it's a, when it, they know that the work is about, then they come with their traditional uh, seeds. They are walking towards those like to want to eat. Why? Because my property has gone ahead of me, has been working. And they come and find if food is not ready and the work is done, they tell you, my wife and my children, please don't forget the cows are angry, they are crying, just go. And some could chase them from this saga without even eating. So Rizaga didn't have a formula. They said when, if you come from the east and you enter the land into the farm, just start digging from there. They start digging from the south, from the north, from whichever, go into the east. you start it there, start working. What they want to see is that they want to see the soil, not the grass, the soil. They want to see things turned upside down. As you could, it, it, it's simply because I'm here. I, what do I want to say here, my brother and my sister? I want to say it this way. You know, when he told them, go into the land, into the, into the, into the farm and the work, it's only at five. And the Bible says, the one who was complaining said, how have you been people who have worked for only one hour? Ah. Why was this first chosen to be the first of this year in our theme? It's about to work. None in the church should give an excuse. Now these people of six in the morning worked, of nine worked, of three worked, and those of five worked for one hour. It is now six payment time. And the owner tells the steward, please go and do the payment. And he informs him. When you start the payment, start from where? From the last person, from the last person downward to the one who came at six. And he says, please pay a denarii, a pen each. So start from those ones who have come, who are up here. In Kenya, it's, we have the, 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 uh, the bottom up. But here, the philosophy here is up what? Yeah, that's what is here, what's here in, in, in the scriptures. So those people who have come only one hour just to start from there. Now listen. There's something here which I want you to know. I want us to know my brother. There's something very important here. The people who came at six in the morning, they were given also a penny. But I found they were very wise. They first received the penny and they put it in their, in their pocket before complaining. They knew you may go and complain and you are told nothing to pay. Go and come. You, you have worked for credit. You can come. So they put their pocket and they went and the question was, people have come only one hour and the payment is just a penny like us. How come? Are you really being fair? If I asked you if that was an ordinary, an ordinary boss in this world, would he be the best boss according to you? You could call, consider them to be very unfair. Because uh, uh, payment is, uh, is as to how much you are put in. That is it. And again, you could also say, how dare this man who came at nine, another one at twelve, another one at three, they are told to go to the farm, they start working without the negotiating. How come? But they were told just to go. And now they started complaining. And they said, no, it's not fair. But the owner said, it is my property. I call it whomever I want at whatever time. And I have the right also to pay whatever I pay. What is wrong? Didn't we agree? Didn't we enter into an MOU? Didn't we understand each other? And they finally told, please, can you take what is yours? That pen is enough for you and go home and go to your place. If you don't want to much trouble, just go. And of course they went. And it was a variable. But you know what? The, the turning point the turning point is found in verse 1 and also is found in verse 16. The turning point is found in verse 1 and is found in verse 16. 
For the kingdom of heaven is like Just man- that, just that. For the kingdom of heaven is like then verse 16. So the last will be the first and the first last. For many are called but few chosen. Yes, Jesus is telling them I have given you a parable so that you can understand how you do things on earth. But now I have a spiritual lesson. This one has what a spiritual implication. I am not talking about working in this world. I am talking about everything. He says, listen, the kingdom of heaven is like. And he says, for the last shall be fast. And the first shall be what? Be fast. For many have been called, but few have been done what? I've been chosen. Now listen carefully. Those people who came at the 11th hour, they are as more important as those who came at 6. And even more important the same as those who came at 3 or even at 6th hour. The reason being, you know, if you have read your Bible, you have seen in, in Luke chapter 9, Jesus sent out the twelve, and they said, "Go and preach the kingdom, and also do the, the issue of healing diseases." In Luke chapter ten, he says, "I have sent also other seventy. You go by two, two by two. Go and also preach, and even tell the seventy when you are going. Pray that the Lord of the harvest can also send even more, because he says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are what few." few. So what does Jesus say in this one? He says from the time God saw fit for him to bring good news of salvation to man right away from the garden of heaven. He had called the patriarchs. He had, they did their bit and they left. That was their hour. Uh, the prophets came. They did their bit. That was their hour. The other in times of the kings and the prophets, yes, they came and did. That was their bit. And he, the time of the people that we call the minor prophets, they came and they did their bit. That was their hour. Without having a base, the, the church could have collapsed somewhere in between. But God said the mission must be continued. Time of Jesus came. He even called people. He first started the ministry. John was there. After John, Jesus has come. Jesus has called his disciples. The disciples are with Jesus. But the other 72 will come, and others will come. And by the time Jesus is going to heaven, he's leaving a team of 120 who are praying so that they can further the gospel. He says in every generation, we must have, have, have people. So what is Jesus teaching here? He's saying this. Yes, for those who have come at the 6, others at 9, at the 12, at the 3, at the 5, all of them are needed in the Lord's vineyard. And the reward is one eternal life. Praise God. The reward is one is what? Eternal life. And for sure, let me tell you, there is no way we can eliminate the 11th hour team from the mission work. You are here today. If God is, decides to bring the gospel into a climax, Tomorrow, next year, the year 2025, then you and me will qualify to be in the 11th hour. If he says yes, if the 11th hour, the time of the cross of probation, will take place maybe 10 years to come. And if some of you are not there, there are people who shall be preached to the gospel and accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And from that moment, they will go out with zeal and determination and with panning, uh, with, the, uh, with the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I am telling you, they will preach, they will turn the world, the city up to, upside down. Many people will flock to the church of God and the feet of Jesus will be baptized will become judging members, then we go from corner to corner, and those people will fit exactly the team of the 11th hour. Yes. You know what? These people who came out in the morning, they, they are complaining. Why are you giving them payment? You know, in the judges' circles, in the ministry, in the judge of this, 
You are put in office this year. Another one comes into place and places you. Why do you complain? We go out and preach to young people. They preach and they become Christians and they become Adventists. You know when they come, we give them the Bible, discover lessons. They read the lessons. They read from page to page. And for your information, you might have been the church for 10 years, but you have never gone through these lessons. When they discover the truth, they go to the spirit of prophecy, they read the books, they become energetic, they understand the gospel, they cannot wait, they are panning from inside when they stand the pulpit and they start to speak great things from the pen of inspiration. We say they are becoming too rash to take care of them. Put us be the governor. They may become how we should tell them we have been around and we have never spoken these things. Let them go through. We put them speedy governors, and the time is no more, my brother, my sister. Time is no more. What do I say? I want to tell you one thing, this one thing is most urgent. Jesus is coming what? Very soon. Get what? In your office. I know time has gone. Let me conclude this way. Ah. If you want uh, to see that Jesus is coming, just watch. Go through the book of Revelation chapter 14 very, very clearly. And see especially the message of the first angel, chapter 6 and chapter, chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. You know, the angel, the, the servants, servants of God must go running because there is no time. They must bring the everlasting gospel. They must declare to the world that time has come for people to worship God rightly and fear God, no human beings. They must declare that for sure the fabric is about, judgment is about, it is only going, it is crossing our names are being examined and therefore the world must be harvested. They must go. They must know that for sure the message must go to all of the corners. If you went to the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 26, 27, 29, it says, as it was in the time of who? No. So shall it be in the time of the coming of the son of who? Man. Now tell me, in the time of no, how many things, how many activities were ongoing? Which were, some were negative and even some were positive. The negative ones, how many, can, can you count? Number one, people were doing what? Alcohol. They were, they were eating. You know you can eat in a negative way and also you can eat properly but you don't have a time for God. They were doing what also? Drinking. Drinking. They were doing also what? Marrying. Marrying. And they were also given to what? Marrying. Yes. You know, married people are enjoying our festivities. And they are chanting and enjoying life. They don't have a time and a place even for God. That is okay. But also others are enjoying and marrying in a wrong way. They are in restaurants, they are in, 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 in lodgings, they, they are in bars, they are doing business, using themselves. And when so it says, when you see those things, know that Jesus is coming. Those are the four activities that were going. But there was a major 50 activity that was undergoing. That was preaching. Because as those things were ongoing, preaching was also ongoing. No was preaching for 120 years. And they say as it was in the time of Lot, so shall it be in the time of the coming of the Son of Man. Let us count also. In the time of Lot, I think you have, you have the Bible. What was happening at that time? What, what activities? Number one? Number one? They were eating. Yes. Number two? They were drinking. Number three? They were marrying. But uh, that one, you, if you read in that Luke chapter 17, verse 28, 29, that marrying is not mentioned. But I want, I have left it deliberately because even the, the others has left it. So they, they were doing some other activities. They were buying, they were selling, they were planting, and they were building. Who can tell me that in our time now, those activities are they done in a lesser or in a bigger way? 
in a big way. Who doesn't want to, to, to build a house and save land? And God has said, don't build. He has not said that one. Building, he's not saying don't build. But he says when you watch that one, it's in a, in a high rate. People are building everywhere. When you hear people are planting everywhere. Everybody must be. You know, he cannot survive on, on that income. He must have a garden somewhere. When you hear people are buying and selling, even those who have what jobs, they say, you have a job, but this job cannot sustain me. I must have a business. Yes. Yes. Uh, then he says, these people are all so eating and drinking. But I think that if the three, the other does not mention about marrying and giving marriage. You know what this one says? Because that was one of the worst activities that's one undergoing. What type of activity which was going? Men advocated the usual relationship between a man and a woman. They were become tired of women. They were now chasing men, chasing their own men for sexual relationship, which is a sodomy. And that was going on. And who cannot say that that one is in a rampant scale? When people have gone even to the extent of bringing those people to the church and they join the, where people worship and they are wedded. One blessed the, 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 the portion of a, of a man, another one of a wife. But our world has gone beyond. It was not only men who vacated uh, from marrying women. Now women have also vacated marrying men. They have gone into lesbianism. So he said, when you see these things, you know that this friend of ours, whom we must put friendship, Jesus is coming again. My brother, my sister, one thing, this one thing, which is more urgent than all, all things that you consider to be urgent, by your own right, yes, they are urgent. Just look down, sit down and even write them, put them down, you call them urgent, yes. But one thing which is common and the most urgent than all of them, remember, Jesus is doing what? He's coming again. So let us do what? Get involved. Now, what have I said for the year 2023? When we break now, don't remember the following. Number one, our theme for the year 2023 is Jesus is coming soon. Get what? Involved. Number two, our key text it is Matthew. Let's go together. Matthew 20, verse 6 and 7. Right, number, number three. We must double our membership by the year 2025. Therefore, we say mission impact 2025. How do we answer? Double our membership. Double our membership. Let's read once more. Mission Impact 2025. Double our membership. Number four, don't forget. Number five or four. Four, don't forget this one. The year 2023. In our union, it is the year of evangelism. And therefore, every member is going to be involved. We have what we call evangelistic activities. They are summarized in a booklet which has been released by our union. And they told us it costs 100. If possible, every member should have that booklet so that you can see which activity you must be involved. Right. Number five, that which will not... You must not forget that every member is being asked at least to bring one soul for this year. Only one. So a child come back like this one who gave us the children's story. Let them go and look for their friends whom they pray for in their home, in the school, in the neighborhood. Let them invite them to the church and they can do evangelism. Let young men go and do evangelism. Let men bring the other men to the church. Just concentrate and focus on one. And also the other thing, it is about distributing the great controversy. Just 
have a budget of at least two books. 400 shillings. Get that book. Ellen G. White says this book must be distributed to all over and be given and be blessed in the hands of non-believers. Get that one. I have spoken here on behalf of heaven so that we can be able to set ourselves from the word go so that we are not late in the mission work. You are a church which has got many members in our field. Over 3,000 members. The only church with the greatest membership in South Nairobi Kajaru field. If we are talking about the double your membership, that means by the year 2025, God is supposed to give us the grace enough so that we can get 1,000 new church members this year, another 1,000 church members the year 2025, another 1,024, another 1,000 church members the year 2025, in total 1,000 times 3. Do you think it is possible or it is impossible? Is it possible? How many say by the grace of God, if all of us went out, God is not limited. That one is possible. Yes, I know it is possible. Pastors, church elders, departmental leaders, ministry leaders. I was impressed. You, you did a contribution as New Life Church members. Apart from supporting the work of God always in tithes and offerings, when you had a fundraising, you did your part very impressively. And again, in December, I visited those sites, Mile 46, Kamukuru, Osonorua, where land was available. Uh, they have already laid a foundation from the Maranatha Church, and on Sunday, they will put up, there will be a one-day church standing on that ground. And the Maranatha have come up supporting us strongly. So from that day, they are in our ground and they are doing one day charges. They have given us 15 charges already and in the next two weeks, they will have erected 15 charges. They have a roof and they have the beaters. But you know, it doesn't have walls and the floor. And they were asking, you can be an individual, you can be one or two people, you can be a group, you can take one church and put a wall there. You just come forward and say, I am ready. I want to do this one, and God will help you. Let me tell you this. There is no any other business that God has given us to do apart from proclaiming the gospel. I want to end here and ask that when you hear your pastor stand here, at any time, all your pastors, where your church elders, in your church board meetings, please respond. Don't wait for anybody to come to preach to you. Just know Jesus is coming soon. I must get involved. I must not be there as a spectator. I must be there as a disciple maker. I must know that Mission Impact 2025 is about me bringing a membership. Yes, the church will come with various methods and approaches. Yes, but I must get involved. There is nothing more urgent than winning souls and prepare them for the second coming of Jesus. My prayer this afternoon is that the Lord may be able to help us and give us his energy enough so that we can be able to go forward and do the work that God wants. And with that one, within a very short time, I'm telling you, you could be only be asking, where shall we open other congregations? Because this church and this compound is full. And by that one, you could have prepared Jesus for the second coming of Jesus. If that is your prayer, that Lord, here I am, I am ready for your work. Please raise up your hand. And may you stand up for a word of prayer. Let's pray. All right. We are praying, our Father and our God, you have spoken us for this long moment. We have things that we call them urgent, and indeed they are urgent in our lives. 
But the most urgent thing is that Jesus, you are coming. And your reward is with you. You are going to see how have we delivered in your final year. Yes. You want every one of us to get involved? It is true. It is not a mere saying that Jesus, you are coming. But the signs that you said we must watch. Lord, they are right. They are in the advanced stage. They are in the closing moments. They are in the 11th tower. All these things around us are happening. And the gospel is being preached. We pray that we may be part of that gospel proclamation. Help us that we may tell others Jesus is coming soon. Help us that we may place the great controversy book in the hands of unbelievers. Help us and direct us into an individual that you can be able to focus and talk about and the Lord be able to convince through your help that this brother or sister may join the church. The Lord, may we embrace the activities that have been put to us and any other that we may go out. May this church multiply and double. May the prayer become a reality that the Lord in the year 2025 we may see that miracle happen because the disciples and the apostles went out and they came and said even demons obeyed. Time has come for that one to happen in our mission, in our gospel proclamation. I commit these members into your church, these church members into your hands. Lord, they have stood before you and they each has come and is going out. May from now and so forth the focus be where is the soul. May you bring that soul into contact with each individual. Prayer free. May you guide until the brother and sister comes with a soul into your sanctuary and into your kingdom. Dismiss us with your blessings now and forevermore. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen.